we covered up with primer and paint, I thought it might be cool to talk about something we discovered on the front differential on this project. As I was planning off this uh, little attachment to the front differential, I noticed GPW and an F underneath it. As you know, Ford called their Jeeps, quote unquote, GPWs, not MBs, and they typically put an F on their bolts and anything really they made, it was interesting. Well, I thought maybe just the covers were changed at some point, but as I continued to clean on the bottom side of the differential, you can see an F in between those bolts as well. So apparently this whole front differential is for GPW. Your first thought might be that somebody switched it out at some point in the life of the vehicle and that is possible but as i've done some research a lot of times on original untouched willis jeeps there will be ford parts in them and the thought process was was that for the war effort all the manufacturers cooperated together to get the job done so it is very possible that this is original to this willis but it was ford supplied so anyway Thought that was kind of a cool detail. So Barry, what are you actually using to uh, prep that part? I like using lacquer thinner. I've used the expensive waxes and degreasers and uh, used them for years, decades. Did a lot of pretty nice paint jobs with them. However, uh, I've still had problems with them. The degreasers and waxers are petroleum distillate, which means they're made of some sort of oil compound to begin with. And I've had problems where I've had some reactions or this, that, and the other. And in the process of trying to fix those, um, I had to go back with thinner to get whatever residue. You're supposed to wipe it on and wipe it off. They're real good for removing wax and grease, but you gotta wipe it off real quick. If you don't wipe it off quick enough, it dries back in place. Mm -hmm. Lacquer thinner, man, it's never let me down. So I, I just, I like lacquer thinner. And the, now, and the whole idea is just to get all the dust, dirt, grease, body oils, Yes. Anything that's going to react to the primer. Mainly greases and oils. They're your worst nightmare. Gotcha. Oftentimes dust, and you don't want to paint over dust either, but a lot of times if it's loose, like lint or something it'll like that, blow. it'll blow away as you're spraying. Right. right. Uh, the grease and oils will not. And gotcha. waxes. So, cool. man, like the thing that cuts it. Yeah, that's cool, man. Very exciting night here at Barry Barton's shop. We are actually about to prime and paint some of these pieces that I have had for quite some time. This is a two year project at this point. Uh, some of these parts I've had, like the leaf springs, I've owned them for more than a year. They're kind of hanging up behind me there. You see some right there. <laughs> but they were e-coated. We took them and had them sandblasted. Uh, the front bumper is still in the original primer that was sent in from Kaiser Willis. It's been prepped and we are going to actually try before the night is out to lay down some primer and paint. The way that's possible in one night is this particular product is a primer and then it's called a wet on wet process. Within an hour of priming you actually spray on the single stage olive drab paint. So it's kind of unusual. Usually you can't prime and paint in the same night, but this product is actually an industrial military grade material that's designed to be done just that way. I'm sure for speed to get the jobs done quicker. So I'll keep you posted. We'll show you some footage as things comes together, but it comes together. <laughs> so we'll keep you posted and I'll uh, let you know how things go.
All right, round two of primer. Here we go. All right, Barry, so this is kind of an unusual paint. You may have kind of touched on it earlier, but it is a single stage, not base clear. It's a matte finish, and it's a wet on wet, is what you called it, where basically you're spraying it really pretty quickly after a primer. So the, the primer that we used is an, a PPG epoxy primer, uh -huh. and with it, uh, typically you have to give it about an hour uh, to breathe and let some of the solvents get pulled out through your exhaust system. This is um, this is an industrial uh, type of paint, industrial grade paint, and it's actually designed to go straight on top of metal, so it has a lot of sealing factors and strength and durability to it as well. It is a ready to spray paint, meaning we don't have to mix any catalyst in it, which also tells you what? Well, it's an air dry system. So, um, trying to mimic what they did in the military back in 1941 um, is is very much that way. So, uh, it's a good grade stuff, but doesn't have the catalyst in it that normally we like to have. But yeah. <clears throat> still very durable. It's tax season, he's an accountant. This is insane to be doing this on a Monday night during tax season, but it is. But hey, we're making it happen. So we're gonna go shoot the last coat of olive drab for the night, and then we're gonna go to bed. Alright, it is well into the night on Monday night and we've got the final two coats on these pieces. Barry, what'd you think about this paint, man? Uh, very different than anything I've shot before. Uh -huh. um, you know, most of the time when I was used to shooting was stuff for the, the high-end restorations, but it, it actually laid on there and it looks the way a 41 Willis is supposed to look. Man, what a long road getting all the nooks and crannies, especially on these deferentials, ball and socket here on the end. Uh -huh. And it, you know, it rotates 360 degrees. You gotta get up in here, back in there, over this way. <laughs> and it's just a pain in the butt to those things. But, wow, does it look nice now. 
You have to admit, you had a fantastic flipper here to help you. I did. If I'd been by myself, it wouldn't have gone so well. See? So having good help is important. Having yes. a respirator, very important. Right. Now all we have left is that monster right there. That's right. So we're going to call it a night. That's enough for one day. We're beat. It's late. But hey, we got more work to do. And we're going to get it done. When he said we're going to bed, he's going to his bed out there, east of here. I'm going to my bed in there. Yes, that is a very important detail. Just make sure we're clear on that. I think that's a wrap. <laughs>